Hey everybody, Nick with Frost CNC, and today we're going to talk about joint fastener templates in Mosaic software. You can see here I've got a 28 inch high uh, sample cabinet. See a simple box here. And we're going to focus on this joint here between our plant on back and our end. And you can see I've got three screw holes here. So in part one, we're going to show how to uh, make this joint smart, meaning add holes as our part uh, grows in size. And so if we go to a taller cabinet here, you'll see that over 30 inches, it knows to add a fourth hole and to evenly space them. And that is not something that's inherent in Mosaic when you start using it. In part two, uh, we're going to go past the four holes that Mosaic allows per joint and show how if we were to make a tall cabinet, you can see here how we now have eight holes evenly spaced. And that's a pretty advanced technique that we'll take you through in part two. Let's do it. All right, so we'll start in part one. You can see I've got this 28 inch uh, sample cabinet from the intro and it's got three holes. And we can see here, if I go to a taller version of this, we'll say 42, uh, still centered, it's all fine. But really when a joint's this long, I would like for there to be four holes. And again, in part two, we'll show how to go uh, beyond four. Uh, but that's what we're going to set up, is we're going to set up to make this joint be smart. And so it knows when to switch from three to four holes, and ultimately to make sure that the spacing is correct. So let's go into libraries and hardware. And we're going to go to fasteners tab and joint fastener templates. And we're going to go to the fastener that I've got selected in this construction method called Conformat Example. And we'll skip the first part of this here and really focus on which joints my pilot holes uh, get applied to. So if I go to end into back, which is the joint we're looking at here, end into back, we can see some joint information here. And we can see we have four locations uh, with stored information meaning four different screw hole locations can be stored for this one joint. So if I look at location one, it says the distance along the joint is an inch and a half from the top. And so you can see right there why our hole here gets placed the way it does, is we're telling it to be an inch and a half down from the top of the joint. If I go to location two, you can see the same thing. We've got an inch and a half up now from the bottom, which places our second hole. If we go to hole three, you can see we've got from center chosen and a value of zero, meaning I always place this third hole uh, right on the center of the joint. Well, you can see how when we're going to go to four holes, this hole is no longer going to be in the center of the joint for our holes to be spaced uh, properly. And so we're going to come back and fix hole three, but we're going to set up our fourth hole first. So you can see uh, when I switch to hole four, don't use is checked, which is why you don't see it show up regardless of the height of cabinet that I type in. And so we're going to uncheck don't use. We do want to use hole four. And before we tell it where, we're going to set this uh, for joint lengths greater than to we'll say 30 for our example. And what that means is uh, it's really kind of a built-in hide function, meaning if the length of this joint, in this case, the height of the cabinet is less than 30 inches, it's gonna hide hole four for us automatically. And so that's really powerful, it's nice because obviously as this cabinet shrinks down, I'm not gonna need four holes if this is only 20 some inches tall and three is fine. And so really once we get 30 inches or greater, uh, it's going to start to add this fourth hole location for us. Now we need to place this hole. So we'll go from the top and I want to be able to place this hole right about here so that it's equally spaced 
once all four of them are there. And so to do that and to make it parametric, meaning that it'll stretch uh, with our cabinet as our cabinet gets taller, is we're gonna write a formula for that distance. So the way we're gonna do that is the first thing we're gonna do is call out the height of the cabinet. In this case though, I'm gonna use the length of the part or the back. And we can do that with part L. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually subtract the distance here to the first hole and also the distance here to the second hole. And really what I'm left over then is, uh, with then, excuse me, is the distance between this hole and this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract the inch and a half that we've got from the top. And I'll also subtract the inch and a half that we have to our hole at the bottom. And anytime we're doing this in inches, we need to have this uh, multiplied T-O-M-M -M, or two millimeters uh, to convert inches to millimeters. As you can see up here, our values need to be in millimeters for our formulas to work. And so anytime I type anything in inches, you'll see me put multiplied T-O-M-M -M afterwards. Now we can do some quick algebra to realize that this is really just three inches times T-O-M-M. -M. And so now we have our distance here to here. And if I'm gonna have four holes, that means I have three equal spaces between the holes that I need to calculate. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide this by three. And that should give us our spacing between the holes. And you can see it's parametric because it's gonna change the spacing as the length of this part changes. Now we're not quite done here because what we've done is calculate the spacing between this hole and where this fourth hole will be placed. But what we haven't done is we haven't added in this inch and a half back to that calculation. As you can see, we're gonna do this from the top. And so to place it, not only does that hole need to be an inch and a half in, but then needs to be our, our spacing calculation here. So we're gonna go ahead and add that inch and a half back in. And so now this hole should be placed perfectly from the top by an inch and a half. And then ultimately the sp spacing that we calculated uh, that's parametric with part length. All right, I'm gonna press okay there. Now it says a half inch here. Uh, this formula currently doesn't know what cabinet it's being applied to. And so I wouldn't put too much stock into this number here. Once we go out and apply it to our cabinet, we should see that the formula is correct. Now, I know hole three will not be right. It's still gonna be locked on center, but I'm gonna go test hole four to make sure that the spacing is right from this hole to where it's gonna show up, and also to prove that it only shows up on joint lengths greater than or equal to 30. So we'll press okay and okay. 3D here, and there it is. Our fourth hole showed up, and the distance from here to here does look like it's gonna be correct. You could imagine if our uh, third hole here was in fact right about here, that it looks like we would have uh, four equally spaced holes. So I'm happy with hole four. Let's test the height. If I drop under 30 inches, we should see hole four go away, and it does. So hiding under 30 is working. If I go back above 30, there it is. Beautiful. So now let's go fix hole three. And this is where we're gonna get into some conditional uh, formulas or conditional formatting. I'm gonna go back to libraries and hardware joint templates, and our conformat example. Go back to our end to back joint. And I'm gonna go back to hole three. Now we've got zero from center and that's fine. But I'm gonna write a conditional formula here that we're gonna add to this formula program. 
that once we reach 30 inches or greater, it's actually going to calculate a different distance. So it's no longer centered. It's actually down here, and so our part spacing is correct. And I could do that from center. Uh, for the ease of this demo, I'm going to actually change this slightly. We're going to go from bottom for this third hole. Now, zero is no longer the right number. We need this to be halfway up the part. So let's do that. Instead of zero, I'm going to do part L divided by two. We'll press OK. Let's go take a look at it, make sure that that still works. All right, nothing's changed. If I drop below 30, see our fourth hole go away. And you can see I'm still centered, right? So I wrote a different formula and I'm referencing the bottom, but really our hole stays centered. Really just a different way to write uh, that centered third hole location. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so now we're referencing the bottom. Now I'm gonna add a conditional formula here. And what I'm gonna say is if part L, the length of the back, is greater than or equal to 30, and this needs to be times T-O-M-M, -M, and I'm using 30 because that's what I used for hole location four, that's the point at which we switch over to a fourth hole. Then the distance becomes, and we're going to use the same formula we had for hole four. So I'm going to go grab that. We're going to put a placeholder in here for now. I'm going to add. I'll press OK. I'm going to go to hole four. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and copy this distance. We've already done this work once. Go back to hole three, go to my formula, and now I want to edit this because this zero is just a placeholder. So I'm going to go click on it and press edit. And I want my distance to be the spacing that we've calculated between the holes plus the inch and a half we've got here up to the bottom hole screw location. Go ahead and press update formula. Now, the way this works is it's going to read this formula program from line to line, just like it were reading code. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to place the hole centered on the part. Then it's going to read this line and it's going to say, if the part uh, length is actually greater than 30, change that hole location to this distance. If it's not greater than 30, it's just going to leave it. So that's how we can add multiple lines of conditions uh, to really kind of move our whole locations around uh, for a number of different reasons. So I'm going to press OK there. And we should be good to go. Let's go check it out. Press OK there. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at our cabinet here. So now we're under 30 and our hole is centered. If I go to 32, Look at that. Our fourth hole shows up, and now our spacing between all of our holes is perfect. Hole three is no longer centered once we reach 30. And you can show, sorry, show here that it works pretty good. We're below 30 inches, three holes. We can get right up next to it, and three holes still shows. And really, right when we hit that 30-inch barrier, you can see it switches over to four and spaces them evenly. So there we go. There's part one. Uh, go ahead and watch part two coming up to see how we can go past the four locations uh, that Mosaic allows. And we'll get to eight in part two. See ya.